Only the witness herself, Melanie, can along with Maximin give an account of the apparition after giving it by word of mouth an incalculable number of times she decided to write it all down in 1878 it was published at Lecce on the 15th of November 1879 with the imprimatur of Bishop Zola and reprinted at Lyon in 1904 a few months before Melanie's death. The Apparition of La Salette This first apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the mountain of La Salette in France marks the beginning of the time of Mary in our world when Jesus through his most beloved mother has warned us of what will happen if we don't reform our lives I have taken the most important parts of the secret given to the witness, Melanie Calvat, which is relevant for our, our times. From this, we can see how our Blessed Mother has come not to frighten us with terrible messages, but to warn us like a good mother would with a child that is going astray, and how much she suffers for us. As we will see, just as in the apparition at Fatima, which came later, Our Lady appears crying and in great sorrow because of sin in the world. The following is not the full message, but the most relevant and important parts of the secret which Melanie has transmitted to us. So in honor of Our Lady, here is the story and the secret of La Salette. On the 19th of September, 1846, the Virgin Mary appeared on the mountain of La Salette, France, to two shepherd children, Melanie Calvat and Maximin Gerard, who were very poor and uneducated children. Both of them had lives full of hardship and difficulties. On the 19th, they were shepherding cows for their masters and reported seeing a beautiful lady on the mountain weeping bitterly. They described her as sitting on a rock with her elbows resting on her knees and her face buried in her hands. The children said she continued to weep even as she spoke to them, first in French, then in their dialect. After giving a secret to each child, the apparition walked up a hill and disappeared. Here is the account in Melanie's own words. On the 19th of September, I met Maximin on the way up. We climbed up the mountain, side together. I discovered that Maximin was a very good, simple boy and would willingly talk about what I wanted to talk about. He was also very flexible and had no fixed opinions. Maximim told me to teach him a game. It was already late morning. When I woke up, I couldn't see the cows. So I called Maximin and climbed up the little mound. From there, I could see our cows grazing peacefully and I was on my way down with Maximin on his way up when all at once I saw a beautiful light shining more brightly than the sun. Maximin, do you see what is over there? Oh my God, at the same moment I dropped the stick I was holding. Something inconceivably fantastic passed through me in that moment, and I felt myself being drawn. I felt a great respect, full of love, and my heart beat faster. I kept my eyes firmly fixed on this light, which was static, and as if it had opened up, I caught sight of another, much more brilliant light, which was moving. And in this light, I saw a most beautiful lady sitting on top of our paradise, with her head in her hands. This beautiful lady 
stood up. She coolly crossed her arms while watching us, and said to us, "Come, my children, fear not. I am here to proclaim great news to you." These soft and sweet words made me fly to her, and my heart desired to attach itself to her forever. When I was up, close to the beautiful lady, in front of her, to her right, she began to speak, and from her beautiful eyes, tears also started to flow. If my people do not wish to submit themselves, I am forced to let go of the hand of my son. It is so heavy and weighs me down so much, I can no longer keep hold of it. I have suffered all the time for the rest of you. If I do not wish my son to abandon you, I must take it upon myself to pray for this continually. And the rest of you think little of this. In vain you will pray. In vain you will act. You will never be able to make up for the troubles I have taken over for the rest of you. I gave you six days to work. I kept the seventh. For myself, and no one wishes to grant it to me. This is what weighs down the arm of my son so much. Those who drive carts cannot speak without putting the name of my son in the middle. At this point, the beautiful lady who was entrancing me for a moment did not make herself heard. I could see, however, that she was continuing, as if speaking, to move graciously her kindly lips. At this moment, Maximin was receiving his secret. Then, turning to me, the Most Holy Virgin spoke to me and gave me a secret in French. Here is the secret, Melanie. What I am about to tell you now will not always be a secret. You may make it public in 1858. The priests, ministers of my son. The priests, by their wicked lives, by their irreverence, and their impiety in the celebration of the holy mysteries, by their love of money, their love of honors and pleasures, the priests have become cesspools of impurity. Yes, the priests are asking vengeance, and vengeance is hanging over their heads. Woe to the priest and those dedicated to God, who by their unfaithfulness and their wicked lives are crucifying my son again. The sins of those dedicated to God cry out towards heaven and call for vengeance, and now vengeance is at their door, for there is no one left to beg mercy and forgiveness for the people. There are no more generous souls. There is no one left worthy of offering a stainless sacrifice to the Eternal Father for the sake of the world. God will strike in an unprecedented way. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. God will exhaust his wrath upon them, and no one will be able to escape so many afflictions together. The chiefs, the leaders of the people of God, have neglected prayer and penance and the devil has dimmed their intelligence they have become wandering stars which the old devil will drag along with his tail to make them perish god will allow the old serpent to cause divisions among those who reign in every society and in every family physical and moral agonies will be suffered god will abandon mankind to itself and will send punishments which will follow one after the other for more than 35 years. The society of men is on the eve of the most terrible scourges and grievous events. Mankind must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink from the chalice of the wrath of God. Churches will be locked up or desecrated. Priests and religious orders will be hunted down and made to die a cruel death. Several will abandon the faith, and a great number of priests and members of religious orders will break away from the true religion. Among these people, 
there will even be bishops. May the Pope guard against the performers of miracles, for the time has come when the most astonishing wonders will take place on the earth and in the air. In the year 1864, Lucifer, together with a large number of demons, will be unloosed from hell. They will put an end to faith, little by little, even in those dedicated to God. They will blind them in such a way that unless they are blessed with a special grace, these people will take on the spirit of these angels of hell. Several religious institutions will lose all faith and will lose many souls. Evil books will be abundant on earth and the spirits of darkness will spread everywhere and universal slackening in all that concerns the service of God. They will have great power over nature. There will be churches built to serve these spirits. People will be transported from one place to another by these evil spirits, even priests, for they will not have been guided by the good spirit of the gospel, which is a spirit of humility, charity, and zeal for the glory of God. Everywhere there will be extraordinary wonders, as true faith has faded and false light brightens the people. Woe to the princes of the church, who think only of piling riches upon riches to protect their authority and dominate with pride. The vicar of my son will suffer a great deal because for a while the church will yield to a large persecution, a time of darkness, and the church will witness a frightful crisis. The true faith to the Lord having been forgotten, each individual will want to be on his own and be superior to people of same identity. They will abolish civil rights as well as ecclesiastical, all order and all justice would be trampled underfoot and only homicides, hate, jealousy, lies and dissension would be seen without love for country or family. The Holy Father will suffer a great deal. I will be with him until the end and receive his sacrifice. The mischievous would attempt his life several times to do harm and shorten his days but neither him nor his successor will see the triumph of the Church of God. All the civil governments will have one and the same plan, which will be to abolish and do away with every religious principle, to make way for materialism, atheism, spiritualism, and vice of all kinds. In the year 1865, there will be desecration of holy places, in convents, the flowers of the church will decompose, and the devil will make himself like the king of all hearts. May those in charge of religious communities be on their guard against the people they must receive, for the devil will resort to all his evil tricks to introduce sinners into religious orders, for disorder and the love of carnal pleasures will be spread all over the earth. For a time, God will cease to remember France and Italy because the gospel of Jesus Christ has been forgotten. The wicked will make use of all their evil ways. Men will kill each other, massacre each other even in their homes. At the first blow of his thundering sword, the mountains and all nature will tremble in terror, for the disorders and crimes of men have pierced the vault of the heavens. Paris will burn and Marseille will be engulfed. Several cities will be shaken down and swallowed up by the earthquakes. People will believe that all is lost. Nothing will be seen but murder. Nothing will be heard but the clash of arms and blasphemy. The righteous will suffer greatly. Their prayers, their penances, and their tears will rise up to heaven, and all of God's people will beg for forgiveness and mercy and will plead for my help and intercession. And then Jesus Christ, 
in an act of his justice and his great mercy, will command his angels to have all his enemies put to death. Suddenly, the persecutors of the Church of Jesus Christ and all those given over to sin will perish and the earth will become desert-like, and then peace will be made, and men will be reconciled with God. Jesus Christ will be served, worshipped, and glorified. Charity will flourish everywhere. The new kings will be the right arm of the Holy Church, which will be strong, humble, pious in its poor but fervent imitation of the virtues of Jesus Christ. The gospel will be preached everywhere, and mankind will make great progress in its faith. For though there will be unity among the workers of Jesus Christ, and men will live in fear of God. This peace among men will be short-lived. Twenty-five years of plentiful harvest will make them forget that the sins of men are the cause of all the troubles on this earth. A forerunner of the Antichrist, with his troops gathered from several nations, will fight against the true Christ, the only Savior of the world. He will shed much blood and will want to annihilate the worship of God to make himself be looked upon as God. The earth will be struck by calamities of all kinds, in addition to plague and famine, which will be widespread. There will be a series of wars until the last war, which will then be fought by the ten kings of the Antichrist, all of whom will have one and the same plan and will be the only rulers of the world. Before this comes to pass, there will be a kind of false peace in the world. People will think of nothing but amusement. The wicked will give themselves over to all kinds of sin. But the children of the Holy Church, the children of my faith, my true followers, they will grow in their love for God and in all the virtues most precious to me. Blessed are the souls humbly guided by the Holy Spirit. I shall fight at their side until they reach a fullness of years. Nature is asking for vengeance because of man, and she trembles with dread at what must happen to the earth stained with crime. Tremble, earth, and you who proclaim yourselves as serving Jesus Christ, and who on the side only adore yourselves, tremble for God will hand you over to his enemy, because the holy places are in a state of corruption. Many convents are no longer houses of God. Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. The demons of the air, together with the Antichrist, will perform great wonders on earth and in the atmosphere, and man will become more and more perverted. God will take care of his faithful servants, and men of good will. The gospel will be preached everywhere, and all peoples of all nations will get to know the truth. I make an urgent appeal to the earth. I call on the true disciples of the living God, who reigns in heaven. I call on the true followers of Christ, made men, the only true Savior of men. I call on my children, the true faithful, those who have given themselves to me, so that I may lead them to my divine Son, those whom I carry in my arms, so to speak, those who have lived on my spirit. Finally, I call on the apostles of the last days, the faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who have lived in scorn for the world and for themselves, in poverty and in humility, in scorn and in silence, in prayer and in mortification, in chastity and in union with God, in suffering and unknown to the world. It is time they come out and fill the world with light. Go and reveal yourselves to be my cherished children. I am at your side and within you. 
provided that your faith is the light which shines upon you in these unhappy days. May your zeal make you famished for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. Fight, children of light, you the few who can see, for now is the time of all times, the end of all ends. The church will be in eclipse, the world will be in dismay. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. There will be bloody wars and famines, plagues and infectious diseases. Who will be the victor if God does not shorten the length of the test? All the blood, the tears, the prayers of the righteous, God will relent. Pagan Rome will disappear. The fire of heaven will fall and consume three cities. All the universe will be struck with terror and many will let themselves let, be led astray because they have not worshipped the true Christ who lives among them. It is time. The sun is darkening. Only faith will survive. Now is the time. The abyss is opening. Here is the king of kings of darkness. Here is the beast with his subjects, calling himself the savior of the world. He will rise proudly into the air to go to heaven. He will be smothered by the breath of the archangel Saint Michael. He will fall and the earth, which will have been in a continuous series of evolutions for three days, will open up its fiery vows and he will have plunged for eternity with all his followers into the everlasting chasms of hell. And then water and fire will purge the earth and consume all the works of man's pride and all will be renewed. God will be served and glorified. The Most Holy Virgin brought her speech to an end in French. And so, my children, You will pass this on to all my people. The most beautiful lady crossed the stream and after two more steps, without turning back towards us who were following her, she repeated to us, and so my children, you will pass this on to all my people. Then she walked on up to the place where I had gone to see our cows. Her feet touched nothing at the tips of the grass and without bending them. Once on the top of the little mound, the beautiful lady stopped and I hurried to stand in front of her, to look at her so, so closely and try and see which path she was most inclined to take. For it was all over for me. I had forgotten both my cows and the masters I worked for I had linked myself forever and unconditionally to my lady. Yes, I wanted nothing, never, never to leave her. I followed her with no other motive and fully disposed to serve her for the rest of my life. And as my heart melted away, sweetly gladdened, the beautiful face of my good lady disappeared little by little. It seemed to me that the light in motion was growing stronger, or rather condensing around the Most Holy Virgin to prevent me from seeing her any longer. And thus, light took the place of the parts of her body which were disappearing in front of my eyes, or rather it seemed to me that the body of my lady was melting into light. Thus, the sphere of light rose gently towards the right I cannot say whether the volume of light decreased as she rose or whether the growing distance made me see less and less light as she rose. What I do know is that I was a long time with my head raised up, staring at the light, even after the light, which kept getting further away and decreasing in volume had finally disappeared. I take my eyes from the firmament. I look around me. I see Maximin looking at me. 
and I say to him, Maxi, that must have been my father's good Lord or the Holy Virgin or some other great saint. And Maximin throws his arms into the air and says, Oh, if only I'd known. The Most Holy Virgin was tall and well proportioned. She seemed so light that a mere breath could have stirred her, yet she was motionless and perfectly balanced. Her face was majestic, imposing, but not imposing in the manner of the lords here below. She compelled a respectful fear, at the same time as her majesty compelled respect mingled with love. She drew me to her. Her gaze was soft and penetrating. Her eyes seemed to speak to mine. But the conversation came out of a deep and vivid feeling of love for this ravishing beauty who was liquefying me. The softness of her gaze, her air of incomprehensible goodness, made me understand and feel that she was drawing me to her and wanted to give herself. The clothing of the Most Holy Virgin was silver white and quite brilliant. It was made up of light and glory, sparkling and dazzling. There is no expression nor comparison to be found on earth. The Holy Virgin was all beauty and all love. The sight of her overwhelmed me. In her finery, as in her person, everything radiated the majesty the splendor, the magnificence of a queen beyond compare. She seemed as white, immaculate, crystallized, dazzling, heavenly, fresh and new as a virgin. The word love seemed to slip from her pure and silvery lips. She appeared to me like a good mother, full of kindness, amiability, of love for us, of compassion and mercy. The crown of roses which she had placed on her head was so beautiful, so brilliant, that it defies imagination. The different colored roses were not of this earth. It was a joining together of flowers which crowned the head of the Most Holy Virgin. But the roses kept changing and replacing each other. And then, from the heart of each rose, there shone a beautiful entrancing light, which gave the roses a shimmering beauty. From the crown of roses there seemed to arise golden branches and a number of other little flowers mingled with the shining ones. The whole thing formed a most beautiful diadem which alone shone brighter than our earth's sun. The Holy Virgin was crying nearly the whole time she was speaking to me. Her tears flowed gently, one by one, down to her knees. Then. Like sparks of light, they disappeared. They were glittering and full of love. I would have liked to comfort her and stop her tears, but it seemed to me that she needed the tears to show better her love forgotten by men. I would have liked to throw myself into her arms and say to her, My kind mother, do not cry. I want to love you for all men on earth. But she seemed to be saying to me, There are so many who know me not. As the Holy Virgin told the little shepherds at the end, Well, my children, you will pass this on to all my people. If you would like to read the whole message of the apparition of La Salette, you can find it in the little booklet Apparition of the Blessed Virgin on the Mountain of La Salette, the 19th of September, 1846. Published by the Shepherdess of La Salette. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, and share with others. May God bless you.